Yeah, this movie was pretty fucking obnoxious and kind of reminded me why I don't like the current Harley Quinn. And my first introduction to this character was when I was a kid and I saw Batman the Animated Series like every day and I thought she was pretty great. There was a really solid episode about Harley being trapped in an abusive relationship, how she's always being used by the Joker for his own personal gain, which is actually pretty some deep stuff. Now, I haven't read the comics, but based off the media platforms I've seen of this character, this is where she peaked. I mean, I played the Arkham games. She was fine, I guess. Um, she didn't really have any complex character traits or anything like that, but she played her role fine. And then Suicide Squad came out. When I first saw this film, I thought she was somewhat charming, but mostly annoying and that was pretty much due to the dialogue the hell's wrong with you people we're bad guys it's what we do and for birds of prey she's just straight up obnoxious i mean margot robbie's a great actress she has the potential to be a good harley quinn unfortunately she's dressed as a hot topic employee and they don't give her anything funny to say i get it comedy is subjective if you found the movie funny more power to you but i have to ask were people really in tears from laughing so hard when harley quinn was like oh i, I really want to eat my sandwich oh oh that's so funny like they played the over dramatic music over something that's not so dramatic but it is for the character like how many times have we seen that cliche Shade bullshit. I would think by now that's a pretty outdated gag. Like, the only people I see laughing at that type of humor are fucking twatter echo chamber people who unironically say Yas Queen. So, yeah, the lead kind of sucks. How about the other characters? Well, Black Canary is kind of boring. The detective is boring, the little child thief is boring, but surprisingly enough, the character that shouldn't even be in this film has the most personality, that being Huntress. I mean, yeah, she does stuff, but it's like Wonder Woman and Batman vs Superman. She helps, but if you cut her out of the movie almost completely, it would change nothing. But I'm glad they didn't because she was actually pretty funny. I like how instead of making her just a cliched badass woman who hides in the shadows, the rest of the characters kind of poke fun at that, and Huntress gets super defensive. She was also a pretty kick-ass character, and she stole every scene she was in. Now, they kind of do the same thing with the uh, detective character, like making fun of her for being a cliched 80s cop, but it doesn't really work. Especially since the other characters are cliched, and they're never made fun of for it. For example, the thief is a runaway child with a bad family life. Yeah, haven't seen that before. Now, as for the villain, played by Hello There, he kinda sucks too. I've only seen Black Mask in a few pieces of media, and I don't recall him being a flamboyant jackass. Now, I don't really care if there are some changes from the comic book to uh, movie format, but... Uh, it just doesn't work for the movie by itself. See, the reason why it's an issue for Black Mask to be over the top and silly is because Harley Quinn is also over the top and silly. If Black Mask was a stern, serious villain, Harley Quinn could have played a decent comedic foil to him. If Black Mask was a serious character, it would have been funny to see his reactions of Harley not taking him seriously. We get an attempt of that during the Harley Quinn interrogation scene, but it doesn't work because he's just as goofy and over the top as she is. So the audience can't really relate to his annoyance because he's not a normal guy trapped in a crazy world since he's just as crazy as the world is around him so yeah for the most part the characters are kind of trash now as for the story they go for the jumping around the timeline trope and i guess it works fine i mean i wasn't really interested in the story to begin with so it doesn't really matter to me they could have put the movie in the same order and nothing would change and yeah he might say it's necessary because you need harley quinn's narration over the different pinpoints of the time and the plot and you yeah, you'd be right, but they wouldn't have to do that if these movies didn't start out as group of characters together before having solo movies. Now, I'm not saying give the little Asian run to her own movie, but I'm talking about characters like Huntress and Black Canary, because when they don't get their own solo movies, we have to waste time on their backstories in a movie about Harley Quinn and get some pretty shitty exposition. Now, the only time I was actually interested in the story was when Harley Quinn's relationship with Joker was brought up, because it reminded me of the old Harley Quinn. Even though it wasn't handled the best, I did like the fact that the shopkeeper betrayed Harley Quinn after she said that he was the only one that cared for her. The reason why this doesn't work is because this character literally comes out of butt fucking nowhere, and we only have like two scenes before we meet him and then he betrays her. We didn't build a long enough connection for this shopkeeper character and construct this reaction of us being surprised, and 
Yeah, I, I wasn't really surprised when you betray her because I barely knew the guy, so I didn't know him well enough for him to do something like that. He could have done anything and I would still buy it. For the life of me, I don't know why uh, the sandwich maker for Harley was the guy that ratted her out. Even though the sandwich gag is stupid, at least he's essential towards something that Harley really cares for, which is the dumb little sandwiches. It would have been a lot better if the sandwich dude betrayed Harley Quinn and, you know, give him a little more character death, make him a more likable character instead of just a background character. That would have made more sense. And maybe at the end of the film, she can learn how to make a sandwich for herself instead of relying on others. You know, just tying something back to her character development. I will say one other positive I have with Birds of Prey is it's at least trying to be its own thing. What drove me nuts about the MCU was that around the third stage, every movie had to connect in some way, so I felt like I was watching a two hour long advertisement for the next movie as opposed to its own solo film. People seemed to be more excited about the end credits rather than the film itself. Birds of Prey has its own style, it kind of takes elements from Suicide Squad which is good because that's the type of movie it's supposed to be. I mean yeah, Birds of Prey isn't really a good film, but at least it's trying to be its own thing.